Welcome back for the second half. James Gregg is uh, returning to the studio. Welcome addition to this week's uh, show with a roundup of everything that's going on sporting wise around the city here on Sheffield Live TV. Graham Needham from Sheffield Union of Golf Clubs is still with us, as is John Newsom, the former Sheffield Wednesday defender, and Chris Holt from the Sheffield Star, who's been briefly substituted. This second half may include extra time. It most certainly will not include penalties. But I'm just <laughs> wondering. I'm just wondering about uh, Saturday about that. I really, you know. I think if I had a bet, that's... Well, I think Wednesday you're going to win, whichever which way. But that penalties is something that's nagging. And they've got yeah. the best goalkeeper for it, yeah? Um, yeah, there's... How, how else do you decide a game, you know? Um, I was looking, I was looking on, on social media today and I, I actually commented on when Sheffield United got, got beat in the... You know, and I put that... Um, when it comes down to which goalkeeper can take the penalty best, it becomes a bit of a farce, doesn't it, of, yeah. of the wonderful game that we, we all love watching. And, you know, so I, I'd like to think they, they should come up with a better option. Of, oh, of, I think the fans love it. Oh. It's exciting. I mean, I don't, <laughs> the penalty side of it, fair enough, but you know when you get to, you know, you've, you've both taken ten and it's yeah. down to your keeper, I think that's a little bit harsh. Kevin Pressman was an ace at slamming him in. Yeah, of course he was. But yeah, he's in know. playoff action this way. We're well, not in action. He's on the bench of the goalkeeper coach. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what was refreshing today at, uh, at the Sheffield Wednesday pre-Wembley uh, jamboree, as it were, there wasn't a single mention of £170, pound, a million pounds, and the richest game in, in football. There wasn't a single mention. I don't recall a question about it. And I don't recall anybody mentioning it. But it's more than that, though, isn't it? You know, most yeah. Sheffield Wednesday fans would argue, and Hull fans, whoever is in that game, particularly this season with the TV rights going up, it's a much more than, you know, the money, isn't it? It's, it's about being in the Premier League, getting back up there after 16 years. It's, it's not about the money that you're getting because of it. Obviously, that plays a part. But it's about the fans and the 39,000 travelling down to Wembley enjoying yeah. winning that playoff final. They're fight. not thinking of 170 no. million, 200 no. million pounds, are they? They're thinking of being no. as you quite exactly. right. They just in want the to be League. the. <clears throat> yeah. Listen, the Premier League is the is where you all want to be, isn't it? You yeah. know, as a player, it's where you want to play. As a fan, it's you know where you want to support your team. As a city, yeah, it's you know, I've got a son at at 19 and a daughter at 21, and and I, and I say to them both. You've never experienced your football club being in the Premier League. Oh, yeah. You know, you never had Manchester United coming to town and Liverpool and Chelsea and, and the buzz that that brings along with it. And, you know, and, and, and really, you know, Sheffield Wednesday, they've, they've sort of like got a half or maybe a full generation of, of, of yeah. supporters that have never actually experienced that. So well, you go back to a time when you were at the football club when they were re when they were last in the Premier League when yeah. they could have relegated was the year that you sadly had to retire yeah, from injury. Yeah. The year yeah. two thousand. Yeah. So double whammy for you having to retire, team going down. Could you have imagined then it would take this long? Unbelievable, really, isn't it? Um, I mean. It's been well written and well documented, you know, the mismanagement of the club and the financial side of it, and and that's a, a massive knock-on effect, isn't it? But um, and and you know, he's talking about the money. I think money is is a really really big part of it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Sheffield Wednesday have done well this season mm -hmm. for many reasons, but one of them being they've invested quite a considerable amount of money into the team, mm -hmm. which they've never been able to do before. So. You know, it does. You know, you buy better players, don't you? You buy better yeah. players on better contracts. You, you, you know, you spend more money in the transfer market, and effectively, you know, you end up with a better team. But you still got to put the pieces together, yeah. and a lot of pieces came at once. And Carlos Carvalho put Absolutely. them together, which is a terrific achievement. The way he's done it. Right, more chats on the Owls and the Blades with Chris Holt after you've talked about. Just about everything. Absolutely. We'll start off, obviously, unless you, you know, you've been living in a box for the last sort of two, three weeks, you'll realise that Wednesday are obviously travelling down to Wembley. It'd be so good, even speaking from the red and white half of the city, um, that um, you know, it'd be great to be covering Premier League football on this roundup next season. So all the best to all uh, the Sheffield Wednesday players, fans, staff, whatever, um, on their endeavours down in London this weekend. Uh, we'll turn our attentions now to our, uh, one of our most successful clubs this season, though, uh, Sheffield Sharks. They're 
the newly crowned uh, Basketball League playoff champions. They, uh, they're set for a name change, actually. Not too drastic. They're going to be called the DBL Sharks Sheffield from the start of next season. I think we'll just call them the Sharks. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Too complicated. We'll get on to some yeah. proper sports news now. Now, we're pretty good at ice hockey in this city, but we're also pretty good at skater hockey as well. Hallamshire Hornets skater hockey. They've won the Central League for the fourth time in, fi in five years. Pretty impressive. And they head to the National Champions uh, National Championships in a few weeks' time. It's their 33rd major trophy in 17 years. So, pretty good. Never spoke about them before on this TV programme, but there you go. We'll probably have to follow them a little bit more closely now, uh, following on from that. Uh, move on to the cricket. Well, it's, it's been a stop-start beginning to the season, hasn't it, really? Um, for, you know, it's particularly for the two Yorkshire League sides. Sheffield Collegiate, they were hosting new opponents in Treaton at Abbeydale last weekend, um, and that only lasted 10 overs before the rain called that one off. And Sheffield and Phoenix United, they travelled north to take on joint leaders Wakefield Thorns, but that was rained off as well. Hoping, hoping for brighter weather this week. Uh, Collegiate are again at home, this time to Wickersley. Uh, they beat Treaton last week in the League Cup, uh, whilst United play against Whitley Hall. Some familiar faces will be gracing the field at Bawtree Road this week. Weekend. On to Rugby League now. Well, it's uh, what's called the Summer Bash in Rugby League. It uh, follows on from the Super League's Magic Weekend up at St James's last weekend. It's at Bloomfield Road, slightly less glamorous, you may feel. Mm. Uh, but they play against Andrew Henderson's London Broncos, the Sheffield Eagles. They'll be looking for, you know, a big result. They lost to Bradford last week. Encouraging signs, though. They played some really good rugby. Mark Aston's side lingering mid-table. Want to get themselves up into that middle eight, where they could be playing against the likes of Leeds Rhinos um, at the moment. I'm a mm. Rhinos fan. Could be disappointing, actually, to see uh, the Leeds Rhinos playing against the Sheffield Eagles, but there we are. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so also if you're an Eagles fan, you're heading over to the North West for that weekend. Have a great weekend, it'll be fantastic. Um, and also onto the individuals, Joe Root playing for England this week in the second test against Sri Lanka. He was runless, um, actually, last week at Headingley in front of his home crowd. Drop him. Exactly, yeah. Failure. That's it. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Bless him. So hopefully he can score some runs. It's mighty cold, I'm being told up there at the moment. Been training outside in jumpers and woolly hats. And uh, obviously talking about Danny Willett as well. Um, he's in action at the PGA Championship. He's tied fourth after a round of six under par at Wentworth and Matt Fitzpatrick. Slightly frustrating today. A few more putts could have dropped. He's level par and just inside the cup line. Marvellous, thanks very much. That's your cut line. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> Chris Holt's coming back in a minute. Substituting the substitute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we do it often, though. Yeah, we, we do. do. We? Yeah, we do. They yeah. reject to see. It's stopped yeah. being embarrassing now for you. <laughs> Sheffield FC ladies. Yeah, absolutely. I must mention this because the coach, Zoe Johnson, I'm delighted to say, I think it's two weeks tonight, will be in the studio. And they had an historic victory, their first victory in, in the, the Women's, Women's Super League, League too, yeah. uh, by... Three goals to one it was against uh, Bristol. Bristol. So congratulations, Sheffield FC ladies. Uh, let's have uh, more of that. And certainly we look forward to chatting Great. to Zoe. In a Great seeing them on the Sky Sports on the tables and it shows the Women's Super yeah. League one and two. And they're on there, Sheffield FC. Fantastic. And they're not at the bottom anymore. They're so it's the nice. They're the second or third so from bottom. But a few more results will be flying up there. Sheffield Wednesday under pressure to beat them to the Premier League. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't yeah, do it. See that? Sheffield FC ladies could get the Premier League football before anybody else does. They could do. And and just before you go, uh, Danny Willett, you know Danny Willett, uh, unassuming guy, uh, talking here earlier while you were driving. Yes, yeah, yeah. To Graham Needham. <laughs> um, no airs and graces. I, th uh, I think, I think he, you know, watching him today as well, I saw his interview and stuff before and after the round, he comes across as just such a normal fella, and I think he's admitted himself that he's finding it difficult to deal with the fact that he is the Masters champion and everyone who, who you know mm. who even doesn't know golf around the world now is starting to know who he is and recognize him before you know he got to 12th in the world but it was a relative unknown he'd done that quite yeah. quietly and I think now he, he could he, walk the street mm. yeah but 12th in the world but now I think especially wearing that green jacket all the time <laughs> well, it he does never stand took out, it doesn't it it does stand <laughs> out <laughs> a bit. so a bit. I think he's, he's probably the right guy to deal with as yeah. is Matt as well you know yeah. He, yeah, yeah. both very yeah, level-headed yeah. Yorkshire lads so Absolutely. I think they'll be fine Excellent. Absolutely. All right, mate. I'll get uh, out. See you next week. Uh, <laughs> all being well. Uh, James is just going to slip out. And by the way, I'm sometimes really glad that uh, I don't have an auto queue in operation for this programme. Commiserations and an explanation about uh, uh, As Mohammed and, and the news that preceded this programme. I meant to mention it earlier. 
there was a technical problem with, with, with the autocue, it could happen to all of us, and uh, you know, rather, there but by the grace of God go I, so uh, as was like literally frozen by that, by that, it can happen, yeah. can happen, this Absolutely. is live, live TV, any of us could freeze at any moment. Um, <laughs> Don't say that. You know, <laughs> yeah. We'll get the TV yips. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, um, listening to Carlos Carvalho today, he, he, was, he made a point, somebody said, are you nervous? In fact, it was a question from Az, actually, Az Mohammed for Sheffield Live TV. And uh, he very convincingly said, no, <laughs> you know, no more nervous than for any other game. Yeah. And while I'm tempted when some managers and players say that kind of thing to think, ah, he's just saying that, I didn't, I didn't get that feeling from Carlos. I think he genuinely is quite laid back going into it. Yeah, I think, um, I think he'd be more excited than nervous yeah. really about it because just because um, they've they've massively um, s sort of like um, done so much better than anybody expected them. I think. I mean, even January, February time, if you'd have said right, you're going to get into the playoff finals, yeah. it would have been a bit of a pipe dream, really. Um, and I just think that we're, you know, we're, Sheffield Wednesday are going to go into it as the underdogs. Everybody. Um, outside of Sheffield expects Hull to win. You know, you listen to the radio, they listen to the, um, the TV and they're all talking Hull up and, 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 and nobody's off really giving us off a chance. Um, and I think we've got a really, really good opportunity. Me too. I think, chance Wednesday, to go I think Wednesday will win. I've oh, just yeah, got to come I, I, I honestly got a real do. Good chance. I was at both uh, press days, media days, I was at Hull's on Tuesday, quite early in the week that, they kind of get it out of the way. And there was a... I mean, Steve Bruce uh, is a man who conducts media affairs extremely skillfully, yeah. um, and and he's a very honest man. And through that honesty, uh, it was a completely different atmosphere from the from the one today. There was a, a profession of confidence at Hull, but an admission that he didn't know which t which of his teams was going to turn yeah. up, and a hope a hope that we get a performance out of these players. And today, uh, there was just an, almost an assumption these players will turn up. Mm. Sheffield. And even even the players as well, Barry Bannon and Glenn Leuven, both seemed very relaxed, and 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 they recognised that people were talking up Hull as being the favourites, but were just sort of. I think Barry said something like, uh, you know, we know that they, the people think that Hull are going to win, but we know what we have got here. We we know the type of player that we have, and uh, and they're quietly confident that they can do it, and and rightly so. I mean, if, you know, there was a lot of talk about. The fact that they hadn't beaten any of the top six teams, but it wasn't as if they got hammered by all of them. You know, they were pretty, pretty close games that could have gone either way. So, and when you, and it comes to beating the top six teams, you do it in the playoffs. Don't oh, well, you? there's no better time to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the underdogs tag is something that Carlos has seized right from the beginning. And even when he did a short burst today, it was interesting. He was asked to do answer a question in Portuguese, wasn't he? And as usual, he took us back for three minutes uh, with, with one question. And there was only one word in that answer that I understood. And it, it was the word underdogs. And I hadn't realised that they haven't got a different word for it in Portuguese. It's different technique from yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and some managers do latch on to that sort of thing and they'll, they'll hang on to it because it's easy. You know, it's easy to, 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 to play yourself down publicly. But you know he's probably obviously telling, telling the players something completely different. Mm. But um, how do you see it? it? How, how, how do you see it? If you, I, I mean, what are you predicting? Are, are you I predicting? must, I must admit, um, I think Hull ju just about, maybe even on penalties. Mm -hmm. I don't. Well, no, actually, I'm gonna no, I'm, I'm disagreeing with myself now because if it goes to penalties, <laughs> I don't, I don't think Hull have the ball. I think, I think Hull will get it. Just maybe by the odd goal, yeah. maybe maybe an extra time. And they're going to be without Alan McGregor, their first choice, almost certainly. Yeah, you back here on Westwood in a penalty shootout. Oh, certainly. I, I would back. It, if it goes to penalties, I would actually back. I think there's a lot of yeah. competent, confident players in the in the Wednesday yeah. team. I've, I've spoken to a few journalists who have watched Hull quite a lot, and mm. the one thing that they all say is that there's a weakness there, there's a weakness in the team if things aren't going their way. Mm. And we saw that, that, yeah, and we saw that against Derby where they, they looked like they might buckle in the second leg. Yeah, it was surprising with the number of experienced players, John, that they have. Players of yeah, but, uh, expectation is a, is a big weight to carry, you mm. know. And the very, you know, for me, the very, very best players in the world 
you know, your Messi's, your Ronaldo's, people like that. You know, the expectation that that they have to perform and produce every week is is so great, and and they do it every week. Now, you know, we're, we're talking about top of the Championship, bottom of the Premier League players who fabulous footballers, or you know, but that that weight of expectation and and can weigh heavy, and I think. The game will be not just won and lost, but, but I think it will play a major part in the mentality of the players and, mm. the, and the team as, as they approach the game on Saturday. And I just think that, again, um, Hull are going into it with that expectation. The, everybody's expecting them to win. They should win. They should have got promotion back, from, back to the Premier League in the first attempt. They've got some you know, ex-international footballers. You know, there's all that going off in their mind, in their camp. I'm sure Steve Bruce is going to be playing that down and trying to get them G'd up and, and in the right manner. But There's also sure. uncertainty over the manager. That's Absolutely. another difference. So as we know, Carlos is staying, come what may. He says, quite in fact, I'll be here for another three yeah. years. He didn't say, I'm hoping to be here, yeah. did he? Uh, Steve Bruce, although he's probably dodging the question for diplomatic reasons, it, talking to people in Hull, they expect that he will be leaving. Well, certainly if they don't go up, if they, if they don't win the match, and there's even a possibility if they do, that, yeah, yeah. that he will go. He's been there four years, and he's he's been in a war zone basically between a section of supporters mm -hmm. and the owners. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to go into that here, but he's become sick and tired of that yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. battleground. And yeah. he'll get another very good job. Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, it's pressure, isn't it? To mm -hmm. me, it's pressure. You know, and and and. Uh, I've said to a few few of my pals over the last couple of days, you know, if, if Sheffield Wednesday aren't successful, you know, Cavallo will go around that dressing room and shake everybody's hand and say, "What a fabulous year you've had! You know, you've 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 sort of like succeeded beyond any expectations." Steve Bruce won't be doing that with a, in, no. in the whole dressing room if they don't win. No. You know, it'll, it'll be failure. It'll be it? massive, massive failure yes. and disappointment and and question marks on, you know. Will it be there? Any? Do you think that's where that weakness comes from? That people talk about the fact that the players that have been brought in are lower-level Premier League teams, where they can, where almost the pressure's off, where the, the you, they can go out and play, where they're not expected to win. Again, when they're playing against the big teams like United yeah. and Liverpool and stuff, and then all of a sudden they drop down, and everybody wants to beat them. It's a massive, it's a massive thing, isn't it? You know, to carry that. That I, 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 you know, keep repeating myself, but that expectation level is is the pressure of going into a game, and and we, you know, we see it in the cup in the cup matches, don't we? You know, the underdogs are playing, you know, Manchester United are away at wherever, and and they raise the game, and they've nothing to lose, and out we go, and 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 you know, another example I gave was Sheffield United when they played Hull in the semi final, yeah, and for half an hour, for well, the first half, yeah. they they battered Hull. Because they were a little bit tentative, Hall, and a bit unsure, and uh, you know, and, and and then fair enough, second half the the quality shone through. They got to the final, and the roles were rever reversed, mm. and Hull played Arsenal off the park for the yeah. first half of the game. Yeah, too and, up, and, and yeah. that's all to do with your mental state, how you approach the game, the expectation level. So, what's your gut feeling, John? I, I I really really think that we've got a great chance on on Saturday. Um, and and I just think it, you know a lot of things are pointing in our in our direction, and and, and I, I do think we'll come out on top. Mm. Okay, me too. I, I uh, had to come in on, on just the uh, yeah, sure. Here. Basically, speaking, you were just talking about your basketball team coming out of Sheffield, coming well. Yep, Sheffield. Danny Willett doing well for Sheffield. It's Sheffield's year. Why not Sheffield Wednesday going up as well? It's Sheffield's year. I think it's stitched on to me. Yeah, we've got Jess Sheffield, uh, yeah. recovering well from injury and a comeback trail for, for the Olympics and Louise Bloor and all sorts of people yeah. uh, all over the place. Sheffield United's year next year, we hope. Um, it's about time. The problem, what, what do we do with a problem like Hammond? Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, that he's exercised an option on his contract, immediately transfer listed by Chris Wilder. Yeah. Um, well, we had in the store today our, our Sheffield United correspondent, uh, James Shield, says that the possibility is now that they'll try and pay him up, which would seem like a, an obvious thing to do because it gets him out of the way. The last thing, the last thing that Chris Wilder wants at the start of his 
tenure in charge there is to have someone hanging around who he doesn't want, mm. who the fans don't want, and he's going to be picking up for a few quid, I would imagine. Yeah. And, and it just becomes, it's an awkwardness that, they, that he could do without. It's a problem that he could do without when he's trying to, trying to kick things off and, and get moving. It's an awful lot of dead money, isn't it? Even if they come it, down it is, and Yeah, it, it is, but yeah. it, they're really just going to have to cut their losses on it and just say, right, Dean, I'm sorry, things yeah. haven't worked out. You're entitled to this. The only Here's other the option would be to get a club to take him on loan, possibly. And it, and I, I, must admit, the wages. I must admit that in the, in, the very, in the very few dealings that I have with him, he didn't appear to be the type of person who would be happy to just go and sit in the stand or sit in the house and, and just pick up a wage packet. Credit know. to him for that. And, and I, you know, I, I, I can't say that for certain, but he, didn't, he certainly didn't come across as that yeah. type. But why has he exercised that option then? Wasn't his card marked? Didn't well, he? he's, he's entitled to it. He's and entitled he does, to he is but entitled why would he? To it, it, you, you would, in that position, you'd perhaps sound out the new manager and say, look, I need to know, you know, what your feelings are. It's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know, he's in, his, and he's in his 30s. And, and yeah. you know, at the end of the day, someone, somebody at the football club signed that off, haven't they? Mm. You know, you know, you can blame the manager and yeah. I like him, but somebody signed that off and and... He'd be a fool not to exercise that right, wouldn't he? If he's if he's got no club to go to, mm. or if he's been approached by clubs which are offering him substantially less financially than, yeah. you know, so he's he's, he's he, unfortunately he's going to force the hand, isn't he? And and I, I would imagine the club will go to him and and try and offer him a deal, you know, let's let's give you yeah. a percentage, yeah. let's so get you on your way, you can go somewhere else. That'll make up the. The, the shortfall, you can start playing football because it, you know if he's he's coming to the the end of his career, so he will want to, he will want to play, yeah. you know he, you know there's there's this myth that footballers don't want to play, yeah. isn't there, you know but yeah. you know whoever signed that off. That, you know, they're the ones who well, should carry the cannon. It's what it's happens it. when you chop and change from managers, though. I'm not saying the decision's wrong. To well, I think it's just it. one more, and hopefully final. Yeah. Although we, we tend to have said this a lot about yeah. United, but hopefully it's one of the last sort of mm. mock-ups that that we can we can pin on the on the Sheffield United board and hope that that everybody finally this time yeah. certainly. But that depends right. on um, getting promoted. Well, yeah. yeah and, there's um, no two ways about it, really, is, is there? In terms of the longevity of Chris mm -hmm. Wilder, popular and the right choice though he is, he has to do it. Well, he, yeah, to be he sure, does. To be sure. Yeah, yeah, he does have to. Um, but then we said that about Atkins, and we said that about Clough and Robson yeah. and Weir, and yeah. <laughs> the list goes on. It certainly does. The list goes on of guests in the studio. I'm grateful to everybody. We've had some fantastic guests, not least again tonight. And uh, thanks to Chris Holt, to James Gregg earlier, to Graham Needham, Needham from the Sheffield Union of Golf Clubs, talking there about Danny Willett, and to John Newsom. Uh, three of us at least will be at Wembley uh, on Saturday. Uh, we've got our tickets. I'm looking forward to press box nosh. Are you? Bit of pre-match there. Never goes. Um, never I'm, goes I'm, the I'm interested to see how the uh, what the how national the, stadium can. can how the other us. half of the, it was very good. It, it was very good at Brighton. It must have been. Was it? Yeah, it oh, was. Yeah. I didn't go to that one. Um, missed that one. But thanks very much, and thank you to you uh, for watching. Uh, if you missed the show, you just come in. It'll be repeated at 11 p.m. tonight. Or you can catch it, we'll get it uploaded, downloaded, whatever the terminology is, on my YouTube channel. See you next week. Bye.